Hello and welcome to episode two of Telford Steam Railway Roundup. We're here at Spring Village. You can see we've got 56 19 is now back in steam. We're ready for the polar season and we want to tell you all the exciting stuff that's been going on since our last video. So come with me and we'll see what we've got in store. So here we are in the, in the local shed, uh, standing in front of one of our latest additions to the railway. And I've got Andrew here, the owner of this 03. And Andrew, just, uh, well, congratulations on Purchase second, That's second, second loco, second loco, name. loco isn't it? Yeah, for that we'll we'll have a look at Hector in a second. So, just tell us a bit about how you've come to become the owner of this loco. Well, I bought Hector three years ago, and ever since then it's always been a case of getting a collection and go for something bigger. I've yeah. always said because Hector's always been the Tonka toy. This came up in traction ads about oh, well, it's got to be three months ago. Right. And I thought, oh, great, we'll go and have a look. Yeah. And it's sort of the ideal loco for this railway, and also for what it is. Yeah. Do some mechanical, and it's a bit like basically Jammo, yeah, but bigger, yeah, which is the ideal local I was looking for. So it's just by chance we had another look at it with Josh, and thought well, it was a bit ropey. Engine was seized, thought put a bid in, it's worth a shot, and uh, in the end we won it. Or say I won it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think my dad still questions why he <laughs> never bought it, but that's two to me name before I was twenty, yeah, and so we'll see what happens. It's great, isn't it? So it's, and, and and now it's here. You see, you put yeah. your bid in, it was successful. So you know, fantastic, and. Obvious question, what are your plans for the O3? Well, like I say, it, it, the, the engine is currently seized, but it has been sat for 20 years. The story goes it was running about 20 years ago, but because it doesn't have the VAC system on it, I think that's sort of why it was one of them on the back burner projects yeah. to get it going. So the goal at the moment is get the engine going, have a look, which we think will probably just be a stuck ring. Yeah. So that shouldn't be too critical. As soon as the engine's going, get it mechanically sound and then uh, paint it. Absolutely, it's going to be great, isn't it? And, and as you say, it's going to be absolutely ideal for our railway having this, isn't it? Yeah. It's a great addition. So yeah, so <laughs> two two locos or, already. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not bad before I'm twenty. No, is it? I was going to say it'll be it'll be what next? But you know, we, yeah. we, we look forward to sort of oh, recording so this. This, this is going to be a massive project, yeah. really, compared yeah. to Hexa. But you've got a great team behind you, haven't you? Working. Got so, me dad and my granddad yeah, to give me a hand. So, uh, so. absolutely fantastic. So yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, Andrew. We talked. Andrew, didn't we, about Hector, your other loco that you're yep. in, and here Briefly we are in the shed. Um, can you give us an update? Because last time we saw it, the engine wasn't, you, we've uh, no. turned over, wasn't it? But the loco wasn't running, I don't no, think. No, I believe it, w it was, I think the last thing we did was the timing chain, because we had to adjust that. That was done. Then we got it going, started up straight away, running well. So that repair worked, and then it did the diesel gala, which yep, absolutely. Yeah, that day, yeah. from what I own, it ran pretty much flawlessly most of the day. The only thing we noticed was an excessive amount of smoke, Yeah. which could be a number of issues, but we think it's just the injectors again. Because now, since then, what we've done is modified the fuel filter, so it's got a better filter on it, more of a modern equivalent rather than the original Rustam one, because that, that was, well, scrap, basically. So that's been done. I think over the winter, now it's in the sheds, we'll hopefully try and get the injectors done. So that should hopefully cut down on the smoke, yeah. and it should give it a bit more oomph, because the bit, one thing we did notice on the diesel gala is you put the clutch in, and you just have to wait, give it the beans, and it would just slowly pick up. And yeah. Much to the models discussed, it was <laughs> kicking some stuff out in the diesel gala. But it was it was great at the diesel gala, the anything goes with it, because we ran Hector with the brake van for yep. brake van rides, and it was really popular, wasn't it, with the... Uh, then we took jam on it as well. Yes, yeah, so, so we had a bit of double editing, didn't yeah. we? So yeah, unusual for this road. So yeah, so it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah. you've got your work cut out. Well, that's yeah. the thing, <laughs> I've got a month in the sheds to work on both of them, so yeah. we'll see what we can do. Brilliant. Well, I know you'll do a fantastic job with it, so it'd be great. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Andrew. No problem. Okay, so here we are uh, in front of the, the another uh, arrival that we've just had at the railway, and I'm standing here with Kev, uh, and you've been instrumental in, in getting this loco to the railway. So how, yep. did, how has it come about? Okay, so normally for the Polar Express, we have a Thunderbird locomotive. The Thunderbird locomotive last year was the 37263. That's going to stop out on its holidays for a little bit longer at the valley, so they very kindly uh, offered us this locomotive to use as our Thunderbird. So it's a rescue loco in case our locomotive fails, we have a standby because Polar Express is really important to us. The revenue it generates, we really can't afford to have any failures at the railway. So they've been very kind enough to lend us this for free yeah. um, for a period into the new year. 
um, we'll be using it. We're trying it out. We've been trying it out the last couple of days just to make sure it's okay for the duties that we're asking of it. So, yeah, it's here as a standby rescue locomotive. Yeah, thank you. And we're very grateful to the Seven Valley Railway for, for letting are. us have that. Yep. And it's going to be used today. Yes, Care it's going to so be yeah. on the dress rehearsals day two. Um, so it's got four trains to run today. Um, it did four trains yesterday. Uh, obviously, this today we've got more passengers travelling today. So it'll have another day service today. It needs a bit of fuel in it. It's a little bit low on fuel. So we might swap it over for next weekend service to ours. But we've got the beautiful option now. We can pick a loco to suit. Yeah. So it'll either be the 09, won't it, or oh, our, our 08. Yep. So we've got, yeah. So yep. it'll be something interesting. And, and then a lovely BR Blue BR livery blue. as well. So yep. yeah, fantastic. So yep. looking forward to using it. So here we are in the cab of the 09. Um, and you can see it's very nice and neat, neatly painted and, and looks lovely. So the controls are, are fairly similar to uh, what we've got used to with our 08 uh, diesel shunter, but our crews are taking the opportunity to familiarise themselves with them because there are some slight differences. But uh, yeah, we're looking forward to using it on the line and uh, see how we get on. I'm still with Kev and we're in front of the latest wagon that's arrived on the railway Kev so again this is we've purchased this one from the Seven Valley yep. Railway so so at the same time the 09 was dropped off by the Seven Valley we took the opportunity to do a few things actually and um, we purchased the rud so um, this is an XBR wagon spoil wagon with sides at tip perfect wagon for us to use um, for spoil movements and the transport of, of earth around the site and, and to, to other sites uh, it's something we've been looking at for a while so we had the opportunity to purchase this off the valley so on the same day the 09 arrived um, this wagon followed it on two lorries so it was a pretty day um, last week um, when we had the two deliveries um, now as also part of that move i did manage to speak to the owners of the 104 power car that was here and we managed to slot that in into the final move on the lorry so when the lorry left it didn't leave empty it actually left with a class 104 dmu so that's the first time in 25 years that this railway doesn't have a first generation DMU on site. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, um, a momentous it's, moment, yeah. I'd say, uh, in the, you know, luckily those units, they were stored here for a while. We did our best to look after them. We did use them occasionally on haul stock and as DMUs, um, but they're going now for re further restoration work back at their owner's railways. So um, again, um, we were, pleased to help them preserve and keep them stored here for a period of time until they get round to restoring them. So yeah, yeah that's so it's it. good. So we've got plenty of space in the yard for the moment. We're not filling we? it with anything else. <laughs> no. We're not yeah, filling it with plenty. anything else. And, and it is odd not to have any first yeah. generation DMUs, absolutely, isn't it? Because the other one is on, is on, the one on, higher, is on yeah. higher, isn't it? Too? But we've got, we have got plenty of second generation Yes, second generation. DMUs that seems to be now. where our future is. It's going to be, isn't it? So yeah. Okay. Okay. okay thank that's you. lovely. Thank Thanks. you very much. So we're back outside in front of the tram and I've got Doug here with me who's been morning, morning and given an, uh, give us an update on the work that's been going on with the tram since we last talked about it. Righty ho, we've got the base of the tram where the boiler sat that was rotten and mm. falling apart so we've had to remove all that plate, remove this section of it so that we could get to the underframe, clean all the underframe, get that painted fit a new plate on the top and this piece is the next piece that's got to be done we've got to replace the the back face there with a new piece of metal which we've got and we're going to cut this here and here so we can bolt it and then the object is that when we do fit the boiler yeah we can get in with the forks and can we can lift it ah, out right, for maintenance yeah. so we can clean yeah. And the other thing was in this side of the tram here, where the boiler sat, there was a lot of old coal and ash and yeah. everything that collected down right. that you couldn't get out. So what we're going to do is stop the panel short, have a removable panel at the bottom, so that we can get in and we can maintain it a lot better than it was so before. So that'll be good when it's in service, isn't it? So yeah, because that can't have done it any good exactly, having all that sat yeah, there, is it? Yeah, and I yeah. notice you've got done a bit of painting. And yes, primer and stuff so yeah there's still a lot of painting to do there's still a lot of fettling there's a bit of metal here that we need to replace but basically the the framework is in good condition yeah um so it's a matter of cleaning it up painting it this piece when it's done ready for the refit of the boiler the new plate that sits on the top is cut and yeah. all sorted so we just need to get the boiler 
put the boiler on, then we can, Ian's going to reroute the steam, cave, uh, the steam pipes and uh, we'll be good to go. And will the boiler sit on that plate? Yes, yes yeah, so yeah. what it is, these, these three points here, one, two, uh, three, was where the original boiler sat. So yeah. when we get the new boiler, we can look at the fixing mountings on that and probably put different fixing mountings on so the boiler's sitting on the frame, yes, not just not on, on the, the, plate. the sheet steel. Yeah. The sheet steel will have a hole in and then we'll have a pan in here that slides in that takes ah, the ash. ash. So, that so again, that's going to be much easier, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because what happened before then? Did it just drop onto the floor? Or? Well, the pan wasn't good. It dropped onto the floor and if you could see the original pictures of this, it was just like a, a rotten mess of steel yeah. where everything and the water had run down and collected yeah. and... Well, we, we took, showed video of how it was and, you know, it had just completely rotted through into a yeah. big hole, isn't it? So that is going to make that that will last longer, isn't it? So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we've got the front fascia of this. That's in the shed. We've rubbed that down and undercoated it. So we're working through and hopefully if we get the boiler and the appeal runs well, we can get the boiler in and hopefully Easter, we can have this can have uh, running, up and running, you know, which and will it, be great for the railway. Absolutely, Will, and it's fantastic that you and, and Jacob, the other, another volunteer who's yeah. been working on this, isn't it? Because it is. It, it is. It needs some TLC, and it's great that we're sort of working on it. So when the boiler, if we are lucky enough to get the boiler, it, we, we don't have extra work to do then. Isn't it? And right. I know you've cleaned up the coach as well, you and Jacob. So it's made a big difference, hasn't it? The coach is, is absolutely wonderful. I mean. There was a, a load of bits and pieces just been dumped in there yeah. and it looked far worse than it was. So when we emptied it and then cleaned it and hoovered it, it, it looks a million dollars. That so just needs a coat of paint yeah. and varnish and that's good to good. go. So that'll be great, isn't it? And we've got a bit of protection on it now with the. Uh, yeah, with we this, just, we just we put some protection over just to make sure that we keep the water from falling everywhere. So when we clean in and tidying parts inside, that it stops it from uh, getting wet yeah but so yeah no what it looked worse than it was yeah to be fair. it did look bad it's <laughs> it aesthetic did look bad. most yeah. of it was yeah yeah, yeah. well that's lovely so well thank great. you very much for what you're doing not a problem so not a problem okay thank thanks you. lovely so okay well, i've now been joined with uh, alan and, and dave uh, and we're standing in front of the star of the show which i was 56 19 but is now 12 25 already in its polar regalia so last time, Dave, we spoke to you in Railway Roundup number one. We did. Uh, and 56 wasn't back in steam, but obviously now it is. So yes, we're, we're pleased it's back in service. It's at the moment, touch wood, it's performing very well. As you see, it's all dressed up, ready for its starring role for the next uh, month or so. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, it's, and, it's, and it's behaving itself. It's behaving itself. very well, isn't it? Yep. So yeah, so mm -hmm. it's good. So it's good. And we've also got some very exciting news since we last spoke to you because Dave is now passed out as a qualified steam driver so congratulations thank you Dave. it's all thrown in straight in the deep end well today <laughs> is today's an exciting day isn't it because yes. what's, what's today your first first, first turn we got it we've got an experienced driver on though as a co-pilot we've got Ali right. who is your steam driver you're you you're firing today yeah, as well doing that, that isn't it so that's today. good that's right. and you've got the most important thing there your food that's my lunch ready yeah. isn't it going yeah. on they're going on the hot plate so so yes, yeah, so yeah. how many trains are we running today? Four today, um, one first one without passengers, then three with passengers. So, yeah. so uh, yes, so it's going to be it's going to be an interesting day. It is interesting, and, it, yeah. and it's just starting to rain. So Make the rails, rails nice down, and damp. So yeah, yeah. It's lovely. So, so it'll uh, give you something on your first exactly. trip on this. So yeah. 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 Well, yeah, so. but again, Dave, congratulations! Thank it's you. absolutely fantastic, and it's really going to help the railway having an extra yeah. uh, steam driver isn't it and you're sharing the role today and that makes it you know much easier much easier for me as roster clerk as well <laughs> <laughs> to find drivers so yeah. good yeah. good luck today and thank, right. you thank you very much thank you so we're now stood in front of the uh, fireless loco that we've had at Telford here for well over 20 25 years now a fireless loco by the name of it uh, it doesn't have and a firebox that doesn't have a fire in it. The steam to make it work would come from an outside source. Uh, and this is not a boiler, but it actually would just be a reservoir for the steam. There's no chimney. So it would run on that steam in a high pressure valve reservoir. And then every so often it would have to go back and have more steam uh, injected in it. Uh, and these were used in businesses and firms where there was a high uh, chance of a fire, uh, fire risk. So chemical 
uh, companies and that, and we couldn't afford to have any sparks emitted from, from the chimney, uh, from the locomotive. So it's been here for about, let's say, 25 years. Uh, it's, I think it's stayed in pretty much the same position, and we have moved this on now, uh, and we give, transferred this to somebody who has the time and the resources who's able to bring this back uh, into working conditions. So um, we at the railway uh, are very fond of it, and we're very sad to see it go, but it's the right thing to do because it, we don't really have a need for it and we don't have the time and resources to bring it back to life. So here we are uh, at the buffer stop. I've got Chris with us again. And if you remember from episode one, uh, Chris and myself were walking down uh, here talking about having to put some track back in. So very pleased, it's a pleasure to say, isn't it? The track has come back in now. How did it go? Uh, yes, Richard, we, we've laid some track back in, uh, as you can see. Um, we've also got a buffer stop which is, is temporary. Um, that buffer stop will keep moving down as we progress the track. You can see the fence down there which is where the barrow crossing is. Um, it's not too far away um, in all honesty. Uh, yes Rich, it, it, it went in reasonably well. I think we spent three think weekends, three weekends, three weekends and we got um, uh, 200 feet of track I think it was yeah. um, back in. Um, really good, it doesn't look too bad at the moment, obviously there'll be final um, tamping and jacking and packing just to get it into the right orientation, um, but yeah, it went, it's, it's it went a, well. It's right. and, yeah. and, and we needed this track in, didn't we, because obviously we're running the Polar Express trains. We did, yes, so we needed a run out um, for Polar just in case, I mean the guys are pretty good, they usually stop in the right position of where they need to, but we needed a run out just in case uh, somebody misjudged or, or the conditions were slippy. Um, so we needed that in, and as I said, we decided to put the buffer stop in that we can keep moving down as we progress the track um, as a safety precaution, just in case they do overshoot. And, and typical British weather, I know it's, it was autumn, winter we, we, we've been doing this, but it, it was wet and rain, but the drains have, have held up. Uh, well, they have, they? yeah, the, the drains are, are doing what they've been put in to do. It's still, we still have some water yes. on, on the inside of the curb because some of the final levelling needs to be done up to chase it, to take it over. But um, yeah, it's it's good and that's come from elsewhere. Uh, and there may be a little bit of work just to redirect some of that water, which we, we knew that potentially could be, because um, some of the water actually comes off the platform itself. So uh, there may be a little bit of remedial work, but nothing too serious. Yeah. So. Plenty of work for the P-Way gang in the new year, Chris. Uh, there is plenty of work for the P-Way gang in the new year, yes. Uh, uh, a huge amount of work for the P-Way gang, uh, I have to say, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, wow, well, looking forward to it. Absolutely, to thank it. you, Rich, yes. Okay, yeah. lovely. Chris, thanks very much. Richard, thank you. Cheers, thank you. So, so now we're here with uh, Pete and Cliff, and Pete and Cliff are part of the uh, Phoenix Model Engineering Society, and they run their five-inch gauge railway when uh, Telford Steam Railway open. We have a great working relationship uh, with each other, so we thought we'd like to introduce them and ask them what you're here doing, because you're here on the railway today, aren't you? Working hard. What are you up to? Well, today we are laying uh, some track panels onto our new track bed to go through the new tunnel, which. Uh, we haven't built yet, we're going to do the track first, then we're going to do the tunnel, ready for the uh, start of the season next year. It is, and it's really popular, isn't it? So many people come yes. and they ask, you know, when is, is the miniature railway running, and oh, they love it, and it's, the adults enjoy it just as much as the, as the children, I think. Yes, the miniature railway and the full size work very good together, we're yeah. off the same platform, and people come to see Telverstein Railway and come to us, and people come to see us and then go to see Telverstein Railway, so we work very well together. And, and how long have you been here? On, on site? Oh, well, I've been here 20 years, and it was here before that. It's, it must be 30 years. 30 years. So it must be yeah, 30 years. It is. And it's great fun, like you say, isn't it? And the kids love it. So we've got the new yes. tunnel is going to be there, I assume. Yes, the new tunnel see? will be set there against that yeah. wall. That will be the one side. And then the new wall on your platform side, and that will all look nice and all integrate yeah. rather nicely. And, and, and it's new track right yes. there, isn't it? This, yes, this, new yeah. track. We haven't laid the concrete yet, but the curve will go around. Yeah. It'll meet up with the original track and to complete the loop. So, so there'll be people out there very interested in the new track and riding on the new track, won't they? So we yes, might get definitely, them yeah, coming definitely. in. Definitely, and then when we get the tunnel done, that'll be exciting as well. So yes. uh, certainly look forward to the tunnel coming back. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, things that youngsters ask for. Yeah, to go through the tunnel. Yeah, they always ask for the tunnel. So, so uh, it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string. It is, yes. But 
Uh, yeah, it's, we'll get you it's a, a rough the new, idea for the, the uh, new track will definitely be up and running for the start of the season next year yeah. so all that will be open and then the tunnel will happen through the year hopefully yeah it's great and you run a mixture of steam yes. live steam and diesels don't live you live steam and battery electric diesels yes uh, um, yes so yeah. if you if you're in here come to see Telford Steam Railway we've also got here working with the Phoenix Model Engineering Society it's absolutely fantastic to run on their five inch mod miniature railway Okay, so here we are in front of the beautiful Christmas tree and I've got Ben uh, with me here. Now you'll remember Ben from the last Railway Roundup video. We were talking in the BSO coach, weren't we? We mentioned about Polar because you were planning for Polar and here yeah. it is, it's upon us. We've it got is. the dress rehearsal uh, this weekend and then it starts uh, Friday, November the 24th. So how has it gone, Ben, since we last spoke with the plan? Yes, yes, so it's um, it's been a, an incredible time over the last month, two months yeah. since our last Railway Roundup. Uh, as you can see, we're ready for Christmas here. The Christmas tree is up. Uh, we're in our retail marquee at the end of the Polar Express experience at the minute. Uh, as you can see, uh, decorated amazingly uh, by our amazing Christmas team. Um, so yeah, things are going well. Uh, it's our dress rehearsal weekend this weekend, so we invite families and volunteers, staff, as well as some of the local residents uh, to our uh, to our train service uh, this weekend. Uh, so we're just putting the finishing touches to it today, uh, and we're running three trains. Uh, we've had lots of happy customers yesterday. Uh, we're just getting ready for the 20,000 people who are travelling with us this year. Um, it's, a, it's a vital income for the railway here at TSR. Uh, and also an amazing experience. So as you've seen earlier in the video, uh, we've brought in a Class 09 locomotive that's on hire from the Seven Valley Railway. Uh, something a little bit different for our crew. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's an incredible experience for all, really. It's been, yeah, it is, isn't it? it um, and my family are coming down uh, today. They're really excited, <laughs> looking forward to it. Um, but it's been a lot of hard work, hasn't it, for all the volunteers, but how, you know, you've been here all day, every day for a <laughs> long time, it seems, doesn't it? So, uh, are you happy that we're at this stage? Yes, now? yes. It, um, it always comes together in the end, uh, and we couldn't do it without our incredible team of volunteers. Um, they've put in many hours over the last two, three weeks and done long days, long weekends um, to make sure that this is all here together. And, and we've reached that point, really. We're just, as I said earlier, we're just doing the finishing touches, uh, and all things go uh, from the 24th of November. And uh, if any of you are joining us, uh, come say hello. It would be great. Ben, thanks very much. Thank you that's very lovely. much. Thank you. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, this episode of Telford Steam Railway Roundup. I hope you've enjoyed it uh, and all the things that are going on. Lots of exciting things happening. I'm stood here in front of Ironbridge number three, uh, a steam locomotive that's uh, very local to this line. Um, and we hope one day to be able to get it back in restored and back into steam. So. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be plenty more videos coming f in the new year. I'd like to thank uh, Joshua, who's the, the man behind the camera and who's done fantastic and will have edited all this into a great video. So thanks for that, Joshua, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.